Well, hello and welcome. Your welcome back into Satisfactory. This is your host Jimodism, and today we're going to look at some basic steel production. So it has finally come to the time where we can start to make some steel stuff. But before that, I will just quickly mention we have a quick we have a hovering cup here in the air. I was just searching for it, by the way. That's so weird. So there we are. <clears throat> Thank you. So, uh, Satisfactory Update 7 has uh, dropped on Experimental. And it's of course always a little bit risky to um, play on Experimental, like back up your saves and all that. But I have started up and played this in Experimental. These changes in uh, Update 7 is very few in comparison to like Update 6 and even more so Update 5. So there is not like a, new, a lot of new stuff that has been changed or added. But just so you know, this is now uh, update 7. Um, so I'm going to show you some small tips that are active in update 7 if you choose to upgrade to it too. And if you play update 7, please back up your saves before launching the game in case there are any issues. Uh, one thing that can make us get some uh, like points very fast to get some uh, tickets in the awesome sink is a new little thing here if we go to rewards it we have a little awesome sink here and you can see we now have something called dna points so that's cool so what we need to do is we go and we're just gonna craft some stinger protein and when we've done that we're going to make alien dna capsule out of these and we will put them in the awesome sink and they are providing us with points from a completely separate queue. So we just slap them in there. You can see they are starting to pop along here. We can just walk up to this machine to check the graph. And here we can see DNA points, zero parts per minute. And they're popping in here, you can see we're getting coupons so fast. This queue is completely separate and can be a great way for you to earn some early points pretty fast. So we, we, got, we just got six coupons of that. So this is like the best way to get some early game coupons in update 7 is to actually go out and hunt. And with that there are some new must-haves in the uh, awesome shop that was added on update 7 so i couldn't show you that and that's conveyor seal mounts you definitely want to buy that just gotta craft some new points come on beautiful let's buy a lot of stuff we don't need also um, like the boom box which we definitely need beautiful so let's research some steel so what do we need to research steel well we need a basic steel production, this little thing. So we're gonna select this milestone, insert some materials in here, some more, there we go, and unlock. Beautiful! So this means that we can now produce things in the foundry. And the foundry is basically for producing steel ingots. And you can see we need to input raw iron ore and raw coal, just like that. So let's make sure and stock up onto some material. Because you can imagine, uh, we already know where our coal sources are. Because that's exactly where we have our coal power plant in the last episode. Um, so we're going to go there. We're going to stock up on some stuff we need to produce uh, the, all the buildings we need there. Just check what the foundry actually needs. Okay, we need a couple of rotors and modular frames. One other little beautiful addition to update uh, 7 uh, is that on your little uh, zip lines, when we hook up then, hold shift. And you can see we are rapidly increasing our speeds here. It's actually going a little bit too fast. And the speed of the zip lines is now almost twice what it... Uh, it's actually more than twice what it was before. As long as you're holding the shift button, you will begin to speed up. Oh god. And you can speed up so fast it's actually easy to 
uh, miss the next line. So I have also discovered a close by iron source. So I've uh, taken the liberty to place down two Mark 1 miners here um, on the iron. And this is a pure iron source. And I have also taken the liberty to connect up a miner on a pure coal source and lead it over here. So we have the uh, coal led up to the iron and we can basically start making some basic steel. So here is the coal source I connected up. It's a pure source so it's 120 per minute from a little miner that's in a little nice hut. But why are we here? Well I just wanted to show you a little addition to the system because my biomass burners were still needed at times. So I doubled my energy production. I added another coal power plant with uh, the same setup as before but the compact version. So as I did tell you, you can instead of using three water extractors, you can use two extractors and overclock both of them with, uh, well, one little power shard. And I also taken the little liberty of slapping together these coal generators as narrow as you can. You can see they are slightly clipping into each other. I placed them as close to each other as possible. And because these water extractors are basically at the same level as the coal power plant, it was not necessary for us to add uh, uh, extra water pumps. And since this, this setup is so failsafe and we already have a power setup to power this thing with, I didn't add any buffers. No, and I uh, also connected them up to a normal source but boosted this source with two power shards to make it meet the standards. So that is why my power is now pretty decent and my biomass burners does not actually burn anything right now as long as we're not using more power than we have coal. Anyways, back to steel production. Let us spawn a little foundry to basically see what, we, what numbers we have to play with there. Right, so it requires 45 iron per minute and 45 coal per minute. This means we have a little weird number to play with. We of course want this to be exactly uh, 120. We want to produce exactly 120 steel per minute. So how do we play with these numbers? We have two ways to do it. Either we'll need to overclock this to 133.334 uh, like that. If we overclock them, we can have two of them and we'll produce a total of uh, 120. We can also all underclock them a little bit, so we produce exactly 40. And you can basically, we can actually write in numbers here with decimals and everything to reach an extremely close number to what we want. So like this. And that's how we can fine tune these values if we really have to. And if we underclock it like this, we can have three. So we're just gonna control Z, copy these settings and uh, add up our coal with our iron to make our uh, steel. So we begin with connecting up the iron with some splitters here and then we can just paste the settings onto all of these machines. We'll just hover over them and click control V and we can have the settings we already set up and you can now see they should each be requiring four per minute, as well as, uh, well, producing 40 steel per minute. So let's do the same with the coal. And there we are. We set up our foundries. We inserted the coal with, uh, well, splitting up by three like this, and it's 120, so it should exactly divide up. It's high time to connect the power to this facility so that we can start producing some uh, steel there. And when we do, we should of course be setting up the machines in order to get the steel pipes and the steel beams. So it starts coming along here and these should be up and running very soon. So uh, we only have 120 steel per minute, which does, which does sound like a lot, but it's actually not a lot. Um, so we need to be quite conservative with our expectations on what we can set up. Right now, we can actually basically only afford two constructors. 
and for, for the time of being, we're going to set these up to produce, uh, well, both steel beams and steel pipes. And we go to this thing here, we can see steel beams, it requires 60 per minute. And this steel pipes requires 30 per minute. This, however, produce 20 steel uh, pipes per minute. And this only produce 15s per minute, and you usually need more beams. So we're gonna boost this facility. Uh, so it now uses 90 per minute. So after boosting that, these should exactly match up to consume 120 steel per minute. Uh, in the future, we're actually going to remove this overclocking unit and change this to be producing beams as well. And we will require the same amount of uh, steel. And when we do that, um, we'll only produce steel and that is for the better because that's uh, what we actually need more uh, usually. But of course, uh, we can adapt it to produce only pipes too. But remember, this setup is not our permanent kind of steel setup. Uh, this will always be an extra setup. Because the amount of steel we can produce in this facility is frankly just not enough in terms of what we need for future projects. So this is just a little thing to get started. One fantastic little addition with Update 7 is also, as I showed you before, the conveyor ceiling mount. So let me just show you what you can do here. So we're gonna take the steel output here. I've connected them up to power as you can see. Just drag them up there. And then we have this, uh, well, conveyor belt. And we can see it automatically changes to wall conveyor now when we move it towards the walls. It's so nice, like finally. And in the roof here, it becomes a, a roof mount if we have unlocked those. So that's quite very awesome, actually. <laughs> yeah, let me just fix the next one and close this off. And you can see we are producing a uh, brutalistic hellhole of a uh, factory here. Only concrete, yes. Oh, and a little building tips I'm not sure I've showed you before. Um, just select the window or something or door. And then you just hold control and click it on the surface you want to exchange for another material. Like this. Very nice. And here for a little extra storage tips that I may have missed to show you before. So if you have a container like this and it's kind of getting full, just add another container and make sure that the outputs and inputs are kind of unsynced and you just slap them on top of there. And then you go and select a conveyor belt, rotate it until it says click, and connect them up. And now the units in this will be transferred to this and you basically have a early gain automatic double container. Very nice. Oh, and a little tiny correction here. Um, or not a correction, I did a mistake and uh, I just found it and it's so small that it's so hard to see so I thought that it might be a good idea to share with this. Remember when we overclock this, it has an input of 90 per minute. So if you use a Mark 1 belt and forget about it, it will basically feed it too slow. So make sure that this extremely little tiny belt is actually Mark 2. Otherwise... Uh, it will be running at like 60% efficiency. Not very nice. Now, however, everything should be flowing perfectly. So we have basic steel, 100% efficient, 100% efficient. It's feeding it as it should. And these are now ticking up in percentages every single ingot they produce and they will soon be at 100. We're ticking up. With this amazing basic steel, we should take a little quick factory tour to see what we have been doing here. So this is just a miner. I intend to drag this home eventually. And if we go up here, we can enjoy the roof of the factory. We have our storage containers filling up right there. And well, we can even build something on top of here if we would feel so inclined. Here we just can enter the factory, we have our coal coming in here, we have our, uh, well, iron integrated, split them up, insert them in the three foundries, uh, underclocked, so each uh, produce a rate at 40, 
and they all combine and produce 120 steel, which is the like convenient max here. And then we added these machines to produce pipes and beams at uh, different rates. Very handy indeed. So I hope that you find this quite useful and that you will enjoy your uh, production of uh, steel so that you can, well, unlock the next uh, steps. And of course, you should absolutely feel uh, tuned and uh, tune in to the next little episode so I can show you the next steps and what's happening uh, further on. Haven't really decided the title of the next video so far, but I think we might be diving into possibly the blueprint maker. Like, uh, we're gonna unlock that and make some blueprints. So, and that's something new for update uh, 7, and that's experimental, but um, this series is still as valid for update 6 as before, uh, because, well, Frankly, not much has changed and it will not change in the near future either by most likability. So the game is of course getting closer and closer to publishing, um, well, levels. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and make sure to uh, subscribe so you can catch the next episode. And next time I think we actually will be unlocking and checking how to make blueprints because I've uh, been wanting to get into that since it's all new. And of course, blueprints are not out yet in stable branch as of making this little video, uh, but the basics are still there. It will be improved a little bit, but it's also possible that the next episode will be about something uh, else, like truck transport. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you did, please leave a like and do subscribe so that you can catch our next ones. This is your host, Jim Odessum, and we are signing out. Bye-bye.